All right, let's go ahead and do something crazy. Hey, welcome back to another exciting Tech Session Saturday. That's right. That's where all of us Volkswagen owners in the Pensacola area get together and work on each other's shit to try to keep it alive for another month. The first Saturday of every month is, uh, is typically when we hold it up on our Facebook page. We actually do show the dates. Sometimes we have to play with them a little, but you can find them there. You can also check out rareairvw.com and see the events. And also I'm gonna start posting them up on my website, duckshit.net. So please check out the websites, go from there, like, comment, subscribe, and pluck that dingle belly. That way you get updates every time I upload a new video. Anyway, we're having a good time here in Ruby today, taking a little ride. Uh, the forecast today was thunderstorms, and I'm looking up at the sky and it's blue. Almost completely blue. To the north, it's kind of cloudy, but you know, it happens. But they were saying severe thunderstorms at 11 a.m., and uh, yeah, and they're not. <laughs> today, we are hoping to see Earl. And if you don't know who Earl is, Earl is the man that's going to be doing the final bodywork and paint on Eleanor. And he's in town today. I was hoping that he might make it to Tech Session, but if he doesn't, there will be a video over on my other channel, over on Duckman Cycles, where you can see Earl having a look at Eleanor and, uh, well, I guess kind of critiquing work and uh, seeing what he has to do. Together we're going to work out a price, and then probably at the end of next month, very likely sometime in the next two months, the car is being shipped off to Classic Car Creations, where Earl is going to finalize Eleanor. And then hopefully by the end of the year I get her back with fresh paint. And that's a huge step in the right direction. I mean, yeah, huge step in the right direction. After that, I mean, what's left? You know, putting her back together, trim and uh, electrical. I gotta finish up the brakes, glass, and I mean, it's all, all really easy, small stuff. So anyways, like I said, like, comment, subscribe, and uh, we'll be back right after the intro. session is almost always at the same place and if you look at the website or you check out the Facebook we do publish the event as well as the address location of where you need to show as I said before it's an open invitation if you'd like to come out to tech session just join us just show up you don't have to RSVP or anything depending upon how many heads show up we usually buy lunch it's almost always pizza but shit I had it in the wrong gear I just wanted to pull out <laughs> instead of third <laughs> when you're trying to pull out of the traffic. The Ruby's running well as usual. After the last car show, which I still haven't published a video to yet, but I need to. Uh, when I got to the last traffic light not far from my house, she started to sputter a little bit. She was idling okay, but when I would uh, try to accelerate, she was a little weak, a little limp. I figured there was probably a little trash in one of the carburetors. But anyway, after I parked her, the problem went away the next time I started her back up, so I don't know what the hell that was about. It wasn't overheating or anything. I mean, there was no odd smells. Nothing seemed unusually hot. And like always, when I turned the key, she was eager to run. Couple pumps on the throttle, turn that key, and she fires right up every single time. It don't matter how cold or hot it is, she always fires right up. And in fact, she always had, even before when I had the old shitty distributor on there, and when I had the carburetors way out of tune and filthy and out of sync, with all kinds of, of leaks, with a 30 PSI fuel pump on carburetors that only need three, she still always fired up. if you can see the badge that somebody put on the back of that PT Cruiser, but it says Sexy 22. <laughs> that 
was Wild Bill. I don't know if you saw him. I guess he's already on a pizza run. That's kind of early. <laughs> yeah, I'm running a little late to tech session today, but he's actually retrieving pizza kind of, kind of early usually. Usually he runs about an hour later. Had a long week this week. Just seems like everybody was piling shit on top of me. Every time I turn around, just something else, something else, something else. Can you help me with this? Can you help me with that? Another job for work. And, and they always call it the most inconvenient time. You know, they don't call first thing in the morning. They don't call end of the day when I can make that work. They call it like 10 o'clock for a project that's two hours away. So in other words, if you leave at roughly 10 o'clock, between 10 and 11, by the time I get my shit to gear, you arrive on location at one o'clock. Let's say it's an hour job, I'm two o'clock. I'm back home by four, your friggin' day is shot. It's ruined, it's just shot. And that's just what's been happening all week long. I've been trying to get outside to work on Eleanor. I'm trying to get the doors done with those hidden hinges. And it just, it hasn't been possible. Uh, every time I manage to get outside, even on my day off, it's always been after three o'clock. You know, there's only so many hours of sunlight left after that. That's who's got the cigarette. I've been smelling a stinky ass cigarette. It's been you, you f dirty bastard. Probably gonna be stuck at this traffic light here. Because as we discovered last month, they seem to have retimed the light, and the light takes a lot longer to change than it used to. The spirit of Massachusetts is the spirit of America. <laughs> I don't know if anybody remember those commercials from way back when in the, uh, I guess it was late 70s, early 80s. Yeah, that light changed faster than I expected it to. Okay, well maybe they didn't retime it last week. Maybe some douchebag didn't pull up to the line properly and the sensor wasn't getting tripped. It's a, it's a hot day today. It's, it's been pretty damn hot down here in Pensacola for the last couple of weeks. I mean, we're talking like high 90s kind of hot with humidity up pretty high. Today it's a high 80s, low 90s, and the humidity is, is moderately high. I mean, it's everything's not soaking wet like it usually is. I am already soaking through my clothes, and of course I've only been on the road for, what, 10 minutes? It doesn't take long. When we get to Don's though, I'm gonna to try to have a cold water. And look, the sky has already clouded up in the last 10 minutes. So maybe there was something true about that forecast. Because <laughs> I mean, it, the sky was completely blue when I left. 10 minutes, clouds have already rolled in. I might have to check the radar here. I might be rolling up uh, Ruby's windows. Trying to stop her from getting rained on. Well, rained in, I should say. She's always getting rained on. I take her out of the garage, just like Eleanor. Take her out of the garage, she gets rained on. There's the tech session sign. That's how you find us. And when you do arrive, just find yourself cruising right around to the back to the shop. Invite yourself and come say hello. Let's see, I don't see Carlos here today. Alright, there's Ruby. We got us a 66 bus with a giant bicycle rack front bumper. I was told it's a kangaroo catcher. <laughs> I don't know how many kangaroos we encounter in Pensacola, but I guess it's good to have one just in case. We got Jeff over here with his 71 Beetle, I think it is. Maybe 72, can't remember. We got the uh, fake split window from the car show. I got some video of that, but I haven't actually uh, put that video up yet, but I will soon, really soon. It's from a week ago we met him. He's uh, got hydraulic suspension. Uh, the hydraulics actually wind up the torsion bars, so it's stock ride, but he can change the height at will, even by remote control. Here's Don's Baja. He's been talking about that thing for a while. I don't know if you remember, but last uh, fall, I guess it was, he had it running on two cylinders, and I was making fun of him. He's like, it runs great, and you can see the antenna was shaking like this. I said, it's only running on two cylinders. How can you tell? I said, well, I can hear it, and the car is shaking really bad. 
Anyway, he touched the two headers on the one side and they were both cold, but on the other side they were both hot. So yeah, it was only running on two cylinders on one side, so it was rough, really rough. Kind of a quiet turnout here. No Carlos yet, anyway, no Thomas. In this Beetle, I've seen it before, but I don't know who it belongs to. How's it going? Hi, Glenn. <laughs> We're here. What we got going on here? It's not cranking. Got juice in the battery. It just mm. my ignition switch, maybe. Uh, maybe. Try jumping it with a screwdriver. See what happens. What? Screwdriver. Or disconnect the red wire under the seat and touch it to the positive terminal. You'll know right away then. And that's easy to do. <laughs> well, we're going to step in here and get a cold beverage, I think. It is hot out today in this sunlight. Wow. It's too freaking hot. All right, so we had the shop starting to fill up with smoke, and I started to wonder why. And apparently That's Don off. didn't get that memo, you know, the hurricane season. They always tell you, don't run your generators or grills, you know, indoors. Unless you have fans going to blow Unless you have out. fans going. Yes. Well, that's not actually blowing the air out because what happens is the air is going this way, so it's drawing the smoke in. Just for that, you don't get a hot dog. I don't get a hot dog? Fine, I'll have ten. Yeah, okay. <laughs> I was waiting for you to say, have my hot dog. <laughs> no! Don's trying to, to kill everybody here with carbon monoxide poisoning. Unbelievable, Mr. Don. Yeah, right now where I'm standing, I don't smell any smoke at all with the fan blowing on me, but if I get behind the grill because of this circular, <laughs> it's pulling all smoke in the shop. <laughs> Leave it to Don. He's grilling inside. <laughs> not a problem. Well, it's not my shop. He says the fan's blowing the smoke out. I don't smell any smoke where I'm standing, but if you stand behind the grill, it goes this way. <laughs> that doesn't count as grilling. That'd be no more worse than what I do in there. He uses a burner. Oh, I didn't even recognize you at the, at the intersection. You know, yeah, I like, noticed. I noticed. Like, well, no, I, was I didn't see it till last second I was either. I looking at the stoplight going. <laughs> right, right. <laughs> and then all of a sudden, out of the corner, I hear. Beep, beep. My, my, I hear. I hear. I hear. Give me. Yeah, I didn't even see you until I was right next to you also. So all the cars are starting all over the place. You'll see, well, I mean, you'll see the video. You'll see my point of view. That's just like these people that run in the school buses. I didn't see it. You didn't see it, yeah. Nine foot tall, 12 foot wide, right. yellow. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Lines, uh, what do you got there, Don? Don's going to tap his grill. Yes, what we have here is a I guess gauge on your, on your propane tank, huh? Okay. Yeah. I just realized he's grilling right next to a gas tank. A oh boy, this just gets better and better. <laughs> yeah, they're all bone dry until all of a sudden they flare up because of the residue. on his patio, but he doesn't have one anymore. Did he blow it up? I don't know. Probably the barbecue grill. He burned it down with the grill. Yeah, no more patio. He did have a new grill, but now it's Yeah, he's grilling right next to a gas oh, tank, even if it's a dry one. Yeah, I, I, I wouldn't do that. That's just, yeah. From all the shellac and shit that's been sitting in that tank because of how old that tank is. I'm trying to kill everybody there, Mr. Don. I gotta find the right tank. It's not in this set. Looks like we got us some pizza for lunch today. Mmm, pepperoni. Happy birthday to Stephanie. We had ice cream. Stephanie ran back inside because it's too hot out. You missed her. Sadly, you guys also didn't see the video where we went out on her birthday and she had a 32 ounce margarita and she doesn't normally drink. And we had to help her to the car and it was quite a funny, funny experience. That's copyrighted. <laughs> yeah, the mama. Well, I guess it's a parody of it, right? Well, it's kind of a cover. Nope. How's it go? Da, da, da. That one? Yeah. Da, da, da. Put some fresh sodas in here. Manufacturer date this year, vintage. 
years later after the Da 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 commercial aired, we're talking like around now, yeah. people have all these theories about the two guys that were driving the Volkswagen together. Did you ever hear any of this? No. That apparently they were a couple of lovers. Really? And that's why they were cruising together and hanging out. And they picked out that sofa for their apartment. <laughs> Well, that was a different song. But <laughs> anyway, the fan theory there, the commercial, I thought that was pretty interesting because when I went back and watched it again, I was like, I think they're right. That would make a lot of sense. And who else would drive a Volkswagen Golf? Am I right or am I right? There you go. That's all I had to say. <laughs> hey, Don, I see your ass. <laughs> Alright, let's get a look up underneath here. Alright, there it is. The hydraulic adjusters are up underneath the back seat, right up in that box. So what do you have to do to modify this? Like you don't. Nope, stock. It's all stock. Everything's stock. It's all stock. You put these bar here and it just squish short. Yep. No, that's the same Stock shock. Uh, I think it's making it easier to see in there. Yeah, I went straight from the back of the truck. Punch it up and down. Front end. That's what you need on yours. Here's the hydraulic yeah. piston. There's the piston. Yeah, this and this is the adjusters, and it turns all the torsions on the inside. Isn't that cool? Everything else is uh, all stock. And then if you come around here, you can see his rack and pinion steering right under here. It's a Chevy. Chevy Cavalier rack. Every rack. Yeah, I can see it up here too. Yeah. You see it? Yep. Yeah, there it is. Kind of interesting the way they set that up. It attaches to the beam from underneath. What's that on the, on the firewall? That's his fuel pump. Fuel pump. That's his electric fuel pump. Yeah, it's fuel pump. That's really. Boy, my lens is dirty. No, 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 no. Hey, why yeah, there it is. Really nice setup. Not cheap though, but really nice. Pans are in some fantastic shape, that's for sure. Everything's nice and clean, no rust. <laughs> It's not split, it just needs to be tightened. Yeah, it's part of that going up and down with the air suspension you're acting. Oh, look how this is down. I think it's like super. Oh, rusty. check the other side. Uh oh, we found a rusty spot. A rusty spot. Yeah, above the transmission. Nobody ever gets that spot with paint. <laughs> well, this turned into a wash. I mean, it rained like the Dickens. A bunch of people bailed before it started raining. So, unfortunately, tech session got ended very, very short today. Still had a good lunch. Ruby managed to stay hidden underneath the tent, so only her ass got wet. But you know how I like all my ladies. I like them a little wet under the backside, if you know what I'm talking about. Anyways, we're gonna get her home, and then we should be seeing Earl. It won't be in this video, it'll be in another video over on the other YouTube channel. But let's go ahead and get in here, get her started, and get us home. Despite being under a tent, it still managed to rain in here a little bit. My floors are wet. I don't know if it's some cross breeze blowing rain under here or if the tent leaks, but uh, yeah. Still got wet. And as I tell everybody, if I even spit on the windshield of this car, two gallons of water wind up on the floor. I don't know how it is. It's like a Murphy's Law kind of thing, but that's just what happens. I need to fix the little seals around the air boxes on here. And those are something that uh, I've been dreading doing because I'm such a big person. And you got to get up under the dashboard and take apart everything that's up underneath there, all your gauges and whatnot. And I'm really not interested in that. So, 
I just don't take Ruby out when it rains. Plus, she doesn't have working wipers anyway, so it all makes sense. All right, here we go. I just went to reach for the traction control button. <laughs> Because on the Z, when it rains out, I like to turn off the traction control. It's just a whole lot more fun to drive when you have a little bit of slip. Got somebody coming up here on the left. I'll let them pass. Woohoo! Drifting! Hell yeah! Nothing like drifting with an open differential. <laughs> Skeeter some uh, some pizza. Didn't want to let her not have any pizza today. Ducks just friggin' love pizza. And every Saturday we usually have pizza. This is a very weird kind of pizza that we had this month. Kind of a surprise. <laughs> no complaint though. It's not bad. we get home before it starts raining again. All right, come on now. Why? All right, let's go ahead and do something crazy. <laughs> but that was fun. <laughs> Sure, slide like motherfuckers. <laughs> that was a one wheel spin. I don't know why you're hitting your brakes for the speed hump so you can cruise over at the speed limit. They're designed for that. Ah, you made me downshift, you fuck. this thing stole. <laughs> that was again not deliberate. I was well in control but again not deliberate. <laughs> Probably the last time you saw it rain, which I guess was about two or three weeks ago. Now, maybe even a month ago now that I'm thinking about it. That was back when Gregory got rained on. And the roads are extremely slick today as a result. And it doesn't help that I'm driving on these little skinny tires. Not to mention the treads on these tires are really, um, you know, kind of knobby. I can put my finger between the treads, they're that wide. This little road over here is mighty skinny. I don't want to spin out. I have no recourse of action. <laughs> God. That was scary. I wasn't even on it and it was starting to slide. Even on the brakes that hard. 
Well, I would say that uh, <laughs> this thing would drive just a million times better with any kind, and I mean any kind, of limited slip differential. Doesn't matter if it's a helix, if it's a clutch style, or even a viscous. I don't think they make a viscous one for uh, old Volkswagens, but still, any kind of limited slip differential, and this thing would drive so much better. Because what happens is one of those wheels will suddenly um, stick to the pavement, and the other one will just spin like crazy, so the car has a bias to want to go straight again. So you lose control of that, that slide, which is one of the things that makes it dangerous, because the car snaps back in the direction that you don't intend it to be going. brakes and we're sliding again my word now this road is brand new pavement so we shouldn't have any problems stopping anyways thanks for watching like comment subscribe pluck that dingle belly and uh, we'll see you next month with another exciting Volkswagen tech session thanks guys